uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about some of the uh, post infection sequelae of the uh, streptococcus pyogenes what i mean by post infection sequelae is that when the uh, infection of the streptococcus pyogenes subsides there may be a, some kind of uh, post infection scenarios or consequences that you may see in some of the uh, individuals now, one of the uh, important post-infection uh, sequelae is the uh, acute rheumatic fever. Now, this acute rheumatic fever is actually the uh, cross-reactivity of the NTM protein antibodies uh, with the myosin protein of the hurt muscle and smooth muscles. And it is uh, this cross-reactivity of the NTM proteins antibodies with the myosin protein of the herd muscles and smooth muscles that have been that have been suggested to be uh, associated with the uh, acute rheumatic fever. Now, what happens during this uh, acute rheumatic fever is uh, what you call as a type two sensitivity reactions. Now, during this uh, type two sensitivity reaction, an antibody mediated immune reaction in which the antibodies are directed against cellular or matrix antigen of the host with the resultant cellular destruction and functional loss or damage to the tissue. If you talk about uh, the uh, streptococcus pyogenes, in this particular case, the uh, M protein of the streptococcus pyogenes, they are very much similar to the myosin protein of the herd muscle and smooth muscles. And when the antibodies, they are made against these M protein, which are known as the NTM protein antibodies, these NTM protein, they go and they bind with the myosin protein of the herd muscle and the smooth muscles, thereby causing cellular damage or the functional loss uh, or the uh, damage to the tissue. Now, in this particular case, during the acute rheumatic fever, when these NTM protein antibodies, they bind with the myosin protein of the uh, herd, they can cause different conditions. Now, one of the condition is known as the myocarditis, which is actually the inflammation of the herd muscles. And this inflammation of the herd muscle is actually a consequence of the uh, cross-reactivity of the NTM protein antibodies with the uh, myosin protein. Uh, the second complication that you see in the acute rheumatic fever is known as the infective endocarditis, which is actually the infection of the endocardial surface of the herd, which may include one or more herd valves. Uh, another complication that is common during the acute rheumatic fever is the uh, pericarditis, which is actually the uh, this pericarditis, which is actually the inflammation of the pericardium, which is the fibrous sac which is surrounding the herd. So this cross reactivity of the NTM protein antibodies that is actually responsible for causing this type two sensitivity reactions, and this type two sensitivity reaction is actually causing this acute rheumatic fever. Another important uh, post-infection sequelae is known as the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Now, in this particular condition, uh, acute inflammation of the uh, kidneys glomeruli that happens because of the type 3 sensitivity reactions. So, in the uh, acute rheumatic fever, you see the type 2 sensitivity reactions. In case of the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, you see this uh, type 3 sensitivity reactions. Now, what happens in the type 3 sensitivity reaction is an abnormal immune response is mediated by the formation of the antigen antibody aggregates. Now, this formation of the antigen antibody aggregate is known as the immune complexes. Now, these immune complexes, they can actually uh, precipitate in various tissues, such as the skin, the joints, the vessels, or the uh, glomeruli, and that triggers the classical complement system. So, in this particular case, if you talk about the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, in this case, the antigen of the S pyogenes that remain in the blood, they combine with the antibodies that had been made against them, thereby making an antigen-antibody complexes. Now, these antigen antibody complexes, they deposit in the basement membrane of the glomerulus, which is the start part of the kidney. And when there is a deposition of the antigen antibody complexes, that is responsible for causing the uh, activation of the complement system and recruitment of the neutrophils, uh, which is actually causing uh, damage to the kidney. And if you uh, 
analyze the urine of these uh, individual you may see uh, proteins in the uh, urine you may see a uh, blood in the urine of these individuals so in the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis uh, because of the type 3 sensitivity reactions there is a damage to the kidney uh, specifically the glomerulus part of the kidney thereby uh, compromising the function of the kidney now, if you talk about the symptoms of the streptococcus pyogene, the most common symptoms, uh, they are the uh, fever, uh, which is actually more than 30 degrees centigrade or 100.4 degree Fahrenheit. There can be painful swelling because of the uh, inflammation. Uh, the tonsil, they may be uh, reddish, they may be uh, swollen, or there may be uh, pus on them. And uh, if you uh, look at over here, uh, you can actually see these pus on the tonsils of the individual having the uh, uh, group A, streptococcus group A uh, pyogenes pharyngitis. There may be headache, there may be nausea, uh, vomiting or abdominal pain. So these are the common symptoms that you see in the uh, individuals with uh, bacterial pharyngitis. If you talk about the uh, diagnosis of the streptococcus pyogenes, uh, two, the, the two most common methods they are used, one is known as the uh, uh, rapid strep test. And in this particular uh, rapid strep test, you actually get the result in about five minutes. What you do is that you uh, introduce, this is the uh, an image showing the structure or the uh, of the rapid uh, strip or the strip that is used in this rapid strep test. Here you introduce your sample and then you have got these two lines over here. This T is known as the test line which actually show you the uh, presence or absence of the uh, antigens and the C is actually the control which actually tell you about the uh, correctness of the result or the validity of the results. Now what you do is you add your sample, uh, you add your sample in this S well which is the sample well and you run it for about 5 minutes. Do not interpret the results later than 10 minutes so in uh, before 10 minutes you should uh, read the results now the different kind of the results that you can observe on these uh, strip test that can be if you look at this particular condition this is actually the positive one and, the, or, and you can also see the uh, positive result over here now when there is a colored line on the t and the c this means that the uh, strip that is working okay the uh, test is valid and the, if there is uh, a colored line on the T, this means that the individual is positive for the uh, streptococcus pyogenes. Uh, Sometimes you may see these uh, lighter bands, but it also indicate that the uh, result that is positive. When you talk about the negative result, there will be a line on the uh, colored line on the uh, C. This means that the strip that is valid and the result that is valid. But if there is no line, colored line on the T, this means that the result that is negative. If you talk about the invalid results, if there is a color line on the T, but there is no color line on the C, this result is usually considered as invalid because there is no color line on the C. So this C is actually showing you the uh, validity of the strip. So if you cannot consider this colored uh, line on the T as positive result because there is no color line on the C. And if there is no color line on any of them, it's also known as the invalid results. So the uh, rapid strip test, it can actually give results within uh, 10 minutes. But as I've told you that the streptococcus pyogenes that can be uh, part of the normal flora, so the rapid strep test sometimes gives you false positive results. So the standard for diagnosis that is the uh, culture test. Now in uh, the culture test what you do is uh, I'm going to uh, show you the steps of the uh, culture test. The first thing you do is that you are going to take the sample from the patient by utilizing a, a sterile swab and you actually get a throat swab from the uh, individual uh, suspected of the uh, infection of streptococcus pyogenes. The next thing you do is that you are going to uh, label the sample and you are going to transport it uh, into the uh, laboratory. Now the transportation is usually actually carried out in uh, a medium containing container so that the uh, bacteria they do not die during the transportation. The next thing you do is that you are going to grow the uh, sample on the media. In the case of the streptococcus pyogen, you are going to use the blood agar. So this is the uh, uh, strip and this is the swab that you have taken from the uh, suspected individual and you are going to spread that on the uh, blood agar media. 
after that you are going to incubate that for 18 to 24 hours usually uh, 18 to 24 hours are enough to uh, grow uh, to show the growth of the positive individuals uh, but if there is no growth uh, for 24 hours you may give it some extra 24 hours to see whether there is growth or there is no growth the next thing you do is after incubation you are going to check for the uh, examination for growth and then if there is any growth on the uh, blood agar media and if there is growth on the blood agar media then you are going to go for the uh, antibiotic sensitivity pattern now during this antibiotic sensitivity pattern uh, you actually apply a uh, uh, pilotra of the antibiotic discs to the plate containing the uh, streptococcus pyogenes and then you see which of the antibiotic is best against it killing that particular streptococcus pyogene or inhibiting the growth of the streptococcus pyogene which is later on used for the treatment of the uh, streptococcus pyogenes. Now the standard used for the antibiotic sensitivity pattern is the CLSI standard which are the Clinical Laboratory Standard Institute uh, which give you the uh, uh, antibiotics that you can use against a particular uh, organism. So once you have got, uh, say for example, if this is the uh, antibiotics, this is showing you the maximum zone of inhibition and which is uh, and showing the organism is sensitive to that particular antibiotics uh, as per standards of the CLSI, that particular antibiotic is then used for treating the uh, streptococcus pyogenes. Now the standard antibiotics that are used for treating the streptococcus pyogenes are the penicillin G or the uh, cephalosporin, for example the ceftriaxone and both of these they are actually the cell wall inhibitors. Now in some cases if the organism they are uh, resistant to the penicillin uh, or the cephalosporin, uh, the other option that is available you can also use the macrolides like the azithromycin uh, which is a protein synthesis inhibitor. So this is all about the uh, uh, bacterial uh, pharyngitis and in these uh, three videos we have a detailed discussion on the bacterial pharyngitis. Now if you like the video uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, share this with your friend and hit the uh, like button.